Hello everyone, we're just going to go through the follow-up of the clinical case we introduced on Monday. So if you remember, that was the 13-year-old male neotred border collie that presented with chronic and progressive clinical signs of an altered mental status and posture. So we presented it was obtained with left pleurototonus. Uh, gait show a proprioceptive ataxia with tetraparesis. It was lateralized towards the right side. Postural reactions, they were absent to delayed on the right side, and uh, you also show absent vision with absent mental response on the right eye and decrease uh, to absent facial sensation on the right. So the question that we ask at that time is, what would you be your neurolocalization? And then could you lateralize right or left? So let's just discuss briefly each clinical case, sorry, each clinical sign. So the first was the obtained mental status. So when we talk about the bright alert uh, mental status, there are different structures that should be uh, functioning. The most important is this ascending reticular activated system, which in um, uh, clinical cases where the mental status uh, remains uh, uh, obtained, you have an alteration of the ascending reticular activated system, so you cannot activate um, all this uh, cerebral cortex to give you the normal uh, bright alert mental status. So when we have a dog that is obtained, and obviously we make sure systemically there is not any reason to explain this uh, alter uh, mental status being what the owner may describe as being quieter less interactive, uh, what they mention as depressed, but we obviously avoid using that term, so we may focus on being uh, obtained. Uh, that could be a lesion either affecting the brainstem or the forebrain, so we cannot really differentiate just based on abnormal mental status. However, when we have a pleurototonus, so we have a head turn and, and body turn, uh, we can localize uh, towards the forebrain, so if we talk about the, the pleurototonus, in this cut, for instance, we have a right-sided head turn and body turn, but then we have the contralateral uh, postural reaction deficit, which in this case is on the on the left. So uh, we can say that on those cases we have kind of an aversion syndrome. So the the um, the forebrain uh, is always detected, receiving input and initiating motor uh, function from the contralateral forebrain. So when we have this. Um, uh, abnormal posture, which is kind, of, is kind of an aversion syndrome, we uh, turn towards the area that, that can be perceived. So in this case, if you have a right-sided uh, head turn, is because your lesion is from the right side of the forebrain because you ignore or cannot perceive any input from the contralateral uh, um, a part of the body, which in this case, if you have a right-sided head turning because you kind of have an aversion towards the left side of your body. So in this case, another way of remembering is that they turn towards the area of the lesion, but I think it's important to understand why rather than remember them, that sentence. So always remember that the forebrain um, uh, receive inputs and initiate motor uh, function from the contralateral uh, side. So in this case, as I said, if you have a right-sided uh, head turn, it will be uh, a right-sided uh, forebrain lesion because you cannot ignore the contralateral. So um, remember that our dog has a left uh, uh, pleurototonus. And then when we talk about the postural reaction, that's a very long pathway. So you can have deficits in the peripheral nerve, which will be ipsilateral, ipsilateral spinal cord, ipsilateral brainstem, but goes to the contralateral forebrain and consciously perceives that abnormal posture of the limb and then uh, it initiate the motor activity from the contralateral forebrain, ipsilateral brainstem, ipsilateral spinal cord, ipsilateral spinal um, peripheral nerve, and then reposition that um, that pull to the normal position. So uh, remember that our dog had a delay to absent on the right thoracic and right pelvic limb. Therefore, if we want to put all in the same, uh, so a lesion in the same um, area, which obviously you were thinking about the, the pleurototonus. Remember this dog had a obtained mental status, a left uh, pleurototonus, and now a right-sided postural reaction deficit. So all of them uh, we could explain with one single area of dysfunction. Just think about what could be 
And the same with the menas. When we talk about uh, the menas, in this case, it was just not absent menas on the right. It also had absent vision. And uh, the conscious perception of vision is also detected mainly by your contralateral uh, forebrain. So in this case, if we're talking about an absent on the right side, we will be thinking about an absent um, or a dysfunction on the contralateral uh, forebrain. And then when we talk about the, fa the facial sensation, this is not a reflex. Flex is a conscious perception of that uh, stimulus. So obviously we need to have the cranial nerve in charge of feeling the face, which is the big uh, trigeminal, and uh, the three branches are sensory. And in this case, the facial sensation was absent on the right, so our right trigeminal nerve obviously should be working, but that conscious perception should be evaluated by the contralateral forebrain. So again, everything in this dog points towards the, uh, in this case, the uh, um, left forebrain. So if we put everything together, uh, we can consider that our dog is having a left forebrain uh, lesion. So just putting everything together, uh, if we put absent, um, sorry, the alternate mental status with the left uh, pleurototonus and then the uh, propensative ataxia and tetraparesis, which was worse on the right, the delay to absent postural reaction deficits on the right, the absent menas response with vision on the right eye, and the decreased uh, facial sensation. So everything points to the left full brain. I hope you got to the same um, neurolocalization, and please let us know if you have any specific uh, question. When we talk about the differentials, obviously you already have seen the MRI, which was amazingly explained by, by Fraser, uh, we, we consider the clinical reasoning, everything fits with a, a chronic, progressive, non-painful, a lateralized forebrain. So there are a few differentials uh, that we can potentially rule out or not having a sanitological differential. So the most likely is either inflammatory and neoplastic, degenerative being so lateralized is very unlikely, nutritional being so lateralized is, is very unlikely. And unfortunately, the final diagnosis of this dog was an hemangiosarcoma and it was euthanized, so we don't have a further follow up. But I do hope you enjoy this case in the meaning of learning to neurolocalize and, and um, uh, seeing the, the, the great explanation of the um, MRI images as it was described by Fraser. Thank you.